retweet it. And you're reviewing Night Trap, right? Yep. Okay. Let's see. What episode number is this? This is 175. I cannot believe we're almost to 200 already. We should have celebratory margaritas on episode 200. Yes, we should. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Night Trap Review. And what platform was this on? What's that? Uh, What system was this on? I did it on the Switch. Night trap, nothing but oh, night trap. Do you want to do the um the soundtrack list for next week? Um, sure. Yeah, that works. Uh, okay. Figure we can throw that in at the very end and get people to submit theirs as well. Yeah. All right. Let me put in the stream key. Uh. Da, da, da. Server URL. It's such a pain in the ass on my morning show every day that I have to re-enter the same (laughs) server URL and the same stream key. Why is it not saving it? It's supposed to save it. I have no idea. That's stupid. All right. Dude, I put in my Twitch key once, and it's been in there ever since. It's such a pain. All right, can you count to 10 real quick? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Shlemiel, Perfect. Shlemazel, Haas and Pfeffer Incorporated. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> We're going to do it. That should be that should be the intro for every episode we do. I'll have to go All and right. capture that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I'm recording on my end. All right. Oh, uh, now your picture's frozen. Oh, no, that's not good. I guess my cat wants to be a part of the show tonight. All right, this is weird. Your picture in OBS <clears throat> is frozen now. Hmm. Maybe it's just laggy. Um. Am I still... Okay, in... I have to have Discord up. Okay. In order to do it. Come on, okay. kitty. You can't stay up here. Come on. No, come on. That was my cat. Right. Captain Stupid. <laughs> Alright, I think I got it. So Um I will go ahead and start streaming to Facebook. Alright. Sounds perfect. Do we have any right. uh, yeah, one viewer already? That's good. Good evening, Xblade 7 and I am the Rampage. Evening. Glad you fellas could join us. It's a rant night. (laughs) It might not be as bad as... uh, uh, We're live on Facebook. What? Oh, no, I have donut glaze. (laughs) I ate a donut right before I got on stream. Oh, donut sounds great. It's, it was a Walmart donut, so it wasn't anything special. Oh, uh, I gotcha. <laughs> I actually have a video shoot tomorrow, so I might swing by Krispy Kreme and grab a donut. Krispy Kreme sounds good. Uh, That's right what now, I any wanted. That's good. what I was craving, but I was already in Walmart. I was like, might as well just get some donuts. Yeah. All right. I'm streaming on Facebook, so okay. I am... Let me share this real quick, and I will be good to go. All right. Uh, Let's see. Nerd Cave Retro is live. Sweet. All right. I am ready. All right. Well, let's do this then. Let me get on our page here so I can read. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Do you like this show and you want to help support us? Do you want us to stay ad-free? 
Do you want extra episodes every month? Well, of course you do. Then head over to patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. Become a Patreon supporter of this very show. Greetings, programs, and welcome back to another Nerd Quarantine edition of the Nerd Cave Retro Show. My name is Jason Robbins. And I am still the social distancing champion, Derek Diamond. (laughs) Undefeated. Exactly. (laughs) Undefeated. So how's your week going? Uh, Not too bad. I've still, like, well, I'll say not still, but I've fully, like, I guess embrace the whole working from home thing and really kind of keeping the the social interaction as far as physically to a minimum. I mean, there's still a couple of times that I have to go out and do video shoots for work, but really other than that, like I've barely left my house other than going to the store and going for the occasional walk or run outside. So yeah. nothing, nothing too terribly eventful uh, this past week had a, pretty chill weekend i did do my first uh live stream on twitch yeah which was a lot of fun and that was good too some, uh, some link to the past which was a lot of fun i enjoyed that got through got through the light world portion so this upcoming sunday i'm going to tackle the dark world or at least mm-hmm. part of the dark world because that's a little bit more complex than the the first half of link to the past so <laughs> um <laughs> we were talking about. Other than that, haven't done too much. We were talking about after I did my stream, uh, me doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because I think this weekend I'm going to do Ducktales again just to see if I can finish it. Um, I'm going to give myself a two-hour time limit to see if I can finish it. Um, we also have. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about your your show this weekend. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk mm-hmm. about that a little later on. And um, but we were also talking about doing um, the original Ninja Turtles on my twitch channel and i think i figured out a way for us to do that through discord it does screen sharing so i think i can have you on the screen while you watch me in real time play it and commentate on it i'm gonna have to have pizza for that yeah (laughs) (laughs) no that'll be fun Uh, it'll be fun to just be able to just like sit back and watch and be able to actually commentate because that was one thing that i felt like i could have done better was talk more throughout the stream but I, I got so focused on the game yeah that i almost forgot that i was streaming yeah that's how, that happens to me too especially during ninja guide and i was just getting so hyper focused yeah on trying to, to get through some of those levels what about you how's your week been eh, same old shit <laughs> at least <laughs> at least i'm still working um you know i, I at least it breaks up the day a little bit and um, I got Animal Crossing last night and uh, started Surprise, playing you're, it. you're doing the show. Oh, uh, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to be back on it. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? It's been fun. Uh, like, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, everybody's been talking s- such high praise about it. I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to try it and see what it's about. I never played it on the, the GameCube or anything like that. I never played any of the 3DS versions, so... This is going to be fun because I got a lot of friends that play it, and um, you can visit each other's islands and stuff like that. I haven't done that yet, but I'll, I'll be doing that by this weekend. Going to visit friends on their islands and all that cool stuff. Finally, I found out who this Tom Nook character is that you're constantly in debt to. So it's going to be a fun playthrough. Is he like the Lone Shark from the Rocky series? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He owns everything, and you're constantly in debt to him. Eventually, I'll give it a shot whenever, which I I won't go into too much detail, but I feel like there's a possibility that I might have more free time mm-hmm. and not in the good way. But Yeah, that sucks. We'll, we'll, uh, well, it's, it's nothing confirmed, but the more time that goes by where we don't play baseball, and I, I don't know if you saw what... Um, what Fauci said today, but he thinks that if there's any professional sports this year, or during the summer, I should say, he thinks that they're going to be played in empty stadiums. Probably. I, I, don't, so, I don't see why I would. Uh, well, the crazy thing is, too, I don't know if you've... 
So oh, go ahead. It says it sounds a little distorted. So. Uh, the crazy thing is too Ooh, no, it sounds fine to me. <laughs> Probably, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, everything's been sounding fine on my end. Yeah. The and, cool uh, thing is, for those who are watching on Twitch, a as of now, we are now streaming on Facebook yes. as well. So. One, uh, and we got we've got one viewer on Facebook Live. So. That's awesome. And uh, I on the rampage asked if there was a point to Animal Crossing, and I was about to get that get to that. I don't really think there is. I think it's more like a Minecraft type of deal where it just it's kind of like an open ended sort of just keep building stuff type of thing. I'm not and just sort of you know open world visit your friends. It's not really like an MMO. It's just I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't. I don't really <laughs> there's not really a story or anything so far it's more just kind of like just you know get your island inhabited and building houses and things of that nature and building gardens and things like that getting money yeah i don't know it's, it's, it's hard to explain once i get further into it i'll i'll have a little bit more to say about it have you ever heard of a game called viva pinata yes i have I, a lot of people were into that game I was too. I feel like Animal Crossing might be similar to that because all you do is you essentially raise pinatas and they come into your um, into your land and you can like build stuff and build like your own little community. So that sounds, sounds like that's kind of what Animal Crossing is. Wasn't Viva Pinata a rare game, or am I mistaken? Mm -hmm. It was a rare game. Okay, it was. Yeah. Yep. I, I Xbox about. 360. Yep, love that game. Absolutely love that game. Yeah, I remember that was a big deal back uh, around 2007 or so. Mm hmm. But uh, I don't know about you. I'm kind of ready to hit the news for tonight. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. This is from NintendoLife.com. The ESRB ratings will now warn players about loot boxes and other random items. Uh, the Entertainment Software Ratings Board in North America might be working from home, but as noted yesterday, it's still business as usual. With this in mind, the organization has just revealed it will now attach a warning to all of its ratings if a video game contains in-game purchases, including randomized items. Um, this builds upon the steps of the organi organization made in 2018 when it began assigning interactive elements to physical video games with in-game pur purchases and user interact notices. Um, See, the ESRB blog post goes on to explain how original in-game purchases notice will be assigned to games that offer any other type of purchases, including additional levels, cosmetic items, and DLC expansions. However, it will not be assigned to loot boxes or similar mechanics moving forward to ensure customers understand when a game offers purchases with randomized elements. Hmm... I, I feel like there's one company that's probably sweating this a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and that is EA. Yeah, I was going to say Looking at EA, you, EA. EA is the uh, the culprit behind... They were the catalyst behind all this stupid loot box crap that's happened over the last couple of years. And um, it says the reason behind this decision is tied to research about parents are more concerned about their child's ability to spend real money in games than in-game purchases being randomized. And I agree with that. I mean, they make it way too easy to, um, you know, like you have to, like that. That was one of my biggest problems with a lot of the the newer games. Like why I quit playing things like um, Hearthstone and you know Heroes of the Storm games, those of that nature, because it's basically play to win, and that sucks. I don't or pay to win. I mean, it's yeah. that's a really shitty game model, and I don't like that. It's like buying a trophy. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I don't mind buying stuff like cosmetic items or things like that for your character in-game or, like, you know, things like that. But when it comes to, like, um, there are a lot of shooters and stuff, especially, like, Fortnite and PUBG, where, like, if people were getting, like, stuff to help you win in the game and loot boxes and i just i don't like that i don't like that you have to pay for shit like that 
Well, and I get it from a business aspect, but at the same time, it's almost like you're double, triple, and even you know quadruple dipping. If you're, and I'll, yeah. I'll use EA as an example, just because I think they're the most known company to do that. Yeah. When you when you have when you buy a game, whether it's digital or physical, and then you have to buy other things within the game to yeah. continue your progress, that to me is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I just because I you're just you, that that's squeezing money out of people mm -hmm. and it's taking advantage and yeah. I don't like that. It's always rubbed me the wrong way and it got worse and worse as the year as over the last 10 years or so it just got worse and worse until finally the government had to step in and the ESRB mm -hmm. was basically their hands were tied. They had to do this because, you know, companies like EA were just taking it way too far. Well, they should have done it from the very beginning because it should be something that, you know, it, and it, yeah, it might deter some people, but at least it's an honest rating. Yeah. That, yeah, you're going to have to purchase things in game. Yeah. Like, I, I think if you, if the buyer goes in with the preconceived notion, and plus it also covers the company in a way, because now if you buy the game with this rating, you're in a way consenting to say, okay, I know I'm going to have to buy some things. In addition to buying the game itself, yeah, and that and you know, like that that game on like Gems of War on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, there's in-game purchases in in the game, but it's it doesn't break the game if you don't purchase these items, and it's not in your face all the time. Like every time you yeah. go to a, a you know move your stick, all of a sudden an ad pops up and be like, "Hey, for four ninety nine, you can get." You know, whatever currency, in-game currency there is, and I'm just, and I, I, as soon as that shit happens, I'm done. Yeah, like I don't like that at all. No, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I don't want your space points. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on to a sad bit of news, and I'm sure. Most everyone in the gaming world has heard about this, but this comes to us from NintendoEverything.com. Rick May, the voice actor of Star Fox 64's Peppy Hair and Andros, passes away due to coronavirus. That sucks. Rick, yeah. Rick May, the original voice of Peppy Hair and Andros, has passed away. May had moved into a nursing home for rehab after recovering from a stroke, but unfortunately caught the coronavirus while there. Poor Aside guy, from voicing man. those two Nintendo characters in Star Fox 64, he played the role of the soldier in Team Fortress 2, as well as the narrator and voice of Genghis Khan in Age of Empires 2. He was more than just a voice actor, having appeared in major motion pictures, TV shows, and commercials. We'd also be remiss if we failed to mention that May was a teacher at Rekindle School. Our thoughts and prayers go out to May's family, as well as others affected by the coronavirus. Yeah, that's sad, man. That you know, the poor guy has a stroke, goes into a nursing home, and then immediately gets coronavirus and dies. Like, that's a bad hand, man. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say he was dealt a really bad hand there. Damn. And I mean, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie and say that, you know, I'm extremely familiar with his career. I mean, of course, I know Peppy Hare and Andros because I was a huge fan of Star Fox sixty four. Mm -hmm when it came out and I mean he voiced the most iconic line in that entire game do oh, yeah. a barrel roll yeah. do a barrel roll Every, everybody knows that line <laughs> have you ever gone but on it's... google and typed in do a barrel roll yeah yeah the the screen yeah. spins axe blade it's... rampage go to google right now and type in do a barrel roll <laughs> I just spoiled it for him but yeah. still do it anyway because it looks really cool but, yeah, but that's, no, I mean, it's, it, it's, it seems like almost every day at this point we're hearing about somebody of note that either has coronavirus or has passed away from it. Yeah. So it, it's, bad, it's super unfortunate. But, you know, our, our thoughts go out to, to his family during it, you know, because it's anytime you lose someone, it's, it's unfortunate. But, yeah. man, to get a stroke and then get coronavirus and pass away from it, that's... <laughs> That's a rough deal. That's a one-two punch, man. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that um, someone within WWE tested positive? No. Who was it? Did they say? They haven't released it, but they said it was it wasn't a wrestler, but it was an on-air talent. Ew. But hey, they're 
they're back to doing live shows now, That's and crazy. our governor deemed them an essential business. Dude, did you see that uh, Trump put uh, Vince McMahon in charge of uh, kickst- like reopening the economy? Yeah, I watched that whole thing. What you know, is it's, happening? Um, <laughs> well, it was him, uh, Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, uh, Jerry Jones, who owns the Dallas Cowboys, and I think... Uh, who else was it? Mark Cuban, who owns the Dallas Mavericks. Like, there's specific, like, team owners, and then, like, all the commissioners, because... And and now for your you, Secretary you, of Interior, Hulk Hogan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, it's... I commend WWE for doing WrestleMania, and I know we talked about that, you know, quite extensively last week, but doing live shows during this whole thing and and I don't care that it's a closed set it's still really dangerous because you have to have everyone travel to yeah. Orlando heck even DeSantis and I don't want to get on a political rant here and I'll stop after this but DeSantis came out and said that all sports to him are essential businesses and I think it was it might have been Major League Baseball in general or it might have been the Tampa Bay Rays they were like um, no thanks. And then good on them for not caving in because it's like I think your governor and our governor are are in a neck and neck race to see who can do the dumbest crap. <laughs> well, like the whole the rest of the nation is aware of it because I did an interview with somebody from my podcast a couple of weeks ago who lives in Los Angeles. And we were obviously talking about the the whole COVID-19 situation. Mm-hmm. I mentioned I'm in Florida. And she's like, yeah, you guys are going to kill the rest of the country. (laughs) I was like, yeah, probably. Probably. Leave it to the South. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, that's my (laughs) political rant for the Yeah, let's move on from that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, For our last story, this is from NintendoLife.com. A one-line code fix resolves Super Mario 64 smoke bug. An apparent one-line code fix for Super Mario 64 supposedly fixed a visual bug... In Mario's first 3D outing, the smoke Mario emits when he makes contact with lava or anything else hot has been replaced with a much better looking particle that's reportedly been within the game all along, uh, according to Polygon. All it took was a single line of code to be swapped. Here's the full rundown from a hacker known as Zoink Noise. It's now. Zoinks! Zoinks! It's now known that this texture has displayed the wrong format by the game, resulting in a black garbage pix- resulting in black garbage pixels. Since video game smoke of this era-, era was often depicted with black garbage pixels, the mistake went unnoticed for over two decades. This patch corrects the error by displaying the texture correctly, correctly as proper transparent smoke. It does not add any new art. The texture has been inside the ROM all along. And um, if you go to... Uh, who is this guy at Blaze Hedgehog on Twitter? Um, he's got a picture of the side by side comparison of the uh, the actual smoke. And I'll be honest; it's really not that much of a difference to me. No, no, there's really not. I, it's cool that you know. And it's one of the things I love about this podcast is when we hear stories about oh, twenty or thirty years later, this was discovered. And in this case, it got fixed. But yeah. honestly, the funniest thing about this is seeing the little X's on Mario's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. I really kind of can't wait for a 64 um, remaster on the Switch. Oh, I will. When that game comes out, I'm going to shut myself off to society and play through this game. Because th- yeah. this is one of the greatest video games of all time. And I, a remaster of it is long overdue. Yeah. And I'm stoked for it. I'm so. Re- I want to play Paper Mario. I want all the Mario games. Right. I'm in a Mario mood, man. I think what we should do when this collection comes out, we should do like a Mario month. Yeah, I'm down. And we did Metroid yeah. month. Mario deserves his own month. Oh, absolutely. Mario if, and if any, Luigi. Honestly, honestly, if any like one franchise deserves a month, it's probably the Mario one. Absolutely. <laughs> But um, but that leads us into this month in video game history. All 
on April 1st of 1976, Exidy, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, uh, releases Death Race, a racing game based on the film Death Race 2000 to video arcades. News of the game's existence breaks nationally in newspapers in the first week of July after a quiet nationwide rollout. The game sparks a public outcry over violence in video games and is banned in many areas. This is uh, interesting because I've never seen that. I never knew this was a video game. Yeah, I didn't know either. Um, the arcade flyer is kind of creepy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm Did I ever tell you about out. my uh, violence in video game story? No. I don't think you did. So, so it, I had a public speaking class that I took in college. Oh, yes, and, you did. And you had to hook okay. up. The <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, did, I, have, I was pretty sure I had told that story yeah. at some point on the show. But it's, it's I, so the, weird the, that you would have a violence in video. I didn't even know that they would like had something like this that early on, violence in video games. You would think during that time that, like, because video games had to have been like really relatively young at that time. Yeah, I mean they were pretty. I mean you're talking about this is around the same time as like Pong. <laughs> you know the yeah. uh, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred doesn't even come out for like another year at this point. Yeah, it is crazy to think that. Like obviously, like if this game came out today. You know the reaction I think would have been different, but to think about it happening in the seventies, yeah, is is pretty nuts. Oh my god, if they could see video games today! <laughs> oh man, yeah. In April of nineteen eighty four, Namco releases Gapless, the sequel to Galaga. We talked about this last year. I remember we talked about this, and I didn't know Galaga had a sequel. I thought Galaga I did have a sequel, but it was like Galaga 2 or something like that. You know, you uh, it's one of those things like Galaga is one of the most iconic or most known video games, but no one knows about the sequel. Oh, this is what we talked about here. It was, um, it was a U.S. In the U.S., a modification kit was later released to change the name to Galaga 3, Possibly to increase recognition, even though there was no Galaga 2. I remember we talked about that. That was weird. Yeah. That is interesting. We've got uh, Raymond Satulio watching on Facebook. He Fantastic. says hi. And then uh, Armes Jackson actually says he never played Mario 64. Really? Hmm. You gotta play it. Yeah. You, that, that's a game like you've... If you're a fan of video games, you got to give that game a shot. That's definitely a must-play. I, I will say real quick, uh, on that note, tomorrow or you know, today, if you're listening to this today, it comes out on audio, I'm doing top five video games on the Daily Diamond. Yes, I need to put in my, uh, my top five in there. <sighs> that list is going to be hard. <laughs> like, I know my top two. I mean, I'm going to try and put... You know something besides Zelda as far as all five of my choices, but yeah, that'll that'll be uh, that'll be a good one. <laughs> uh, let's see, April nineteen eighty five, Game Arts releases Thexter. Uh, I like the name. Yeah, it's a run and gun game from Game Arts. Uh, let's see, it was a really wow. This thing's got quite the. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to read like something about the game, but it doesn't say it. Just keep all it says is like what it, what consoles it came out for. Just different, um, like the PC game for the NEC PC eight thousand and one in nineteen eighty five. Okay, say that ten times fast. Yeah, the Tandy Color Computer Three, Apple II, Apple II GS, Apple Macintosh, and Tandy one thousand. Mm hmm. Uh, it sold half a million copies. That's a lot, especially yeah. for back then. Yeah, it says here it quickly quickly became a best selling hit, selling over five hundred thousand copies. Good for them. And it was only popular in Japan. No, no wonder I hadn't heard much that's, about that's, it. But still, I like in one country. That's even more impressive. Yeah, that's like half their population. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's see. In April of 1987, IBM launches the PS2 line of computers, which introduces VGA graphics and three and a half inch floppy drives to PCs. Mm. I remember us talking about this last year. The Axeblade said that uh, in Thexter and Thexter Neo, you get to transform from robot to a jet. Now that sounds awesome. Transformers. More than meets the eye. You mentioned Neo. I thought Keanu Reeves yeah. might make a cameo. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I know Kung Fu. I know. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was see. about to say that exact same thing. <laughs> I love that sketch. That sketch. I love the, uh, the Celebrity Jeopardy sketches for SNL were some of my funniest, like the funniest sketches of all time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Man. Especially with um, Norm MacDonald. Is uh, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Turd Ferguson. It's funny. Uh, April 2nd of 1994, uh, Square Company releases Final, Fan uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy 6, then known as Final Fantasy 3 in North America for the SNES in Japan. Of course it was known as 3, because why would it? Why would it? It's part 6. Why would it? Of course it's known as part 3. Really? <laughs> Just makes sense. And that's sense. why I put this segment where I did. It makes all the sense. It makes sense to the Final Fantasy fans. Yeah, and they can have it. <laughs> you know what I should do? I, I should repost the video I put on Twitter of the best thing to do with a Final Fantasy game. Yeah. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I remember I posted that on my personal twitter because i was like this is just my opinion <laughs> don't don't knock the show completely uh -huh. because of it if you want to come after me with your torches and pitchforks go right ahead let's see in april of 1995 mortal kombat 3 is released for arcades i feel like mortal kombat 3 is never really talked about compared to the first two because like yeah. mortal kombat 1 started it and two and i think i mentioned this either last week or the week before is probably a better overall game even though I enjoy part one more, but no one ever really talks about the third one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I think I've played two way more than part one, though. Maybe that's why part two is a little more special to me, because like when I think of Mortal Kombat, I think of part two. Yeah. Mm. I mean, both fantastic games. Yeah. I was trying to think. Uh, Baraka, that's my guy. Baraka. Baraka. Uh, also in April 1995, the 27th, Jumping Flash is released by Exact SCEA for the PS1. What the hell is Jumping Flash? Let's see what this is. Not I've, to be confused with the Rolling Stones song. Yeah, I was just going to say. Or the, uh, the Whoopi Goldberg movie from the 80s. Oh, that's an even better reference. Okay, the, uh, there's a first-person perspective. The game follows a robotic rabbit named Robit as he searches for missing jet pods scattered by the game's astrophysicist antagonist, say that three times fast, character Baron Aloha. Okay. <laughs> Maybe whenever I'm in, like, my 50s or 60s, I can be a Baron. Yeah. Baron Diamond. Call myself Baron Diamond. <laughs> you should name the show that tomorrow, the Baron Diamond. Uh, the, the Daily <laughs> Baron Diamond. Wear like a... F no, actually, I do have a top hat. That I could wear. And you, you like draw like a, one, a twisty mustache on. <laughs> if I really wanted to be douchey, I would shave everything but the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> just have it for that one show. and then. But then I'd have to go clean shaven because I, I, I cannot pull off a mustache in any way, shape, or form. I would love that. That would be hilarious. But to close us out for this week's edition of This Month in Video Game History, in April of 1996, Eidos Interactive acquires Centrigold Pick which holds core design creator of the Laura Croft character and U.S. Gold. I remember us talking about this last year. Mm-hmm. I do, I do. So, you know, funny enough, I've never really played any of the Tomb Raider games. I was just going to say, I, haven't, I don't think I've ever played a Tomb Raider game. I didn't even like the it, movies. <laughs> the last one they did wasn't terrible. I mean, it was the story was very safe, but 
I liked it better than either of the Angelina Jolie. Yeah, I don't know. I just never, I don't know. I just, I just never got it. As much as I like, like I just finished Uncharted Four. You know, I love Nathan Drake. I love uh, Raider, uh, um, Indiana Jones. But I just, I never could get into the Laura Croft stuff. I don't know. It always, even back then, like even the PlayStation versions looked crappy. Is it, or was that just me? No, the first Tomb Raider game looks pretty rough. Yeah, the, like even as bad as like. Um, you know, Shadows of the Empire looks now like it. Even it looked even worse than that to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being sexist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have such a huge agenda against female polygons. Yeah. But uh, before we go into our review for tonight, Derek's got some shout-outs. And before Derek does the shout-outs, I do want to. I have a surprise for our Patreon supporters. The day you get to listen to this, or you guys that are watching in the uh, in the chat rooms right now, tomorrow we are going to drop for the Patreon patron uh, patron supporters only for at least the first week. Um, we're going to drop a uh, commentary track tomorrow for Ghostbusters, uh, the real Ghostbusters season one, episode one, featuring me, Derek Diamond, and Mr. Wally Phelps. And it's going to be on the Patreon page, so you can go, and uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get to listen to it way before everybody else does, because it's going to be another week or two before I give it to the general public, because you know what? They ain't paying for it! So you guys paid for it, you get it first. So you'll get to listen to that as soon as this episode is over with. You can go right over there to the Patreon page and listen to it. And going off on that, if you would like access to those special episodes you can head over to our patreon at patreon.com slash nerd cave retro we want to shout out armez j xblade 07 daniel salmon john jekyll and carlos longoria thank you guys for keeping the lights on for us and as i said if you want to contribute to our patreon and get those exclusive episodes early head over to patreon.com slash nerd cave retro and tonight i'm going to be talking about Can that music get any more 90s? <laughs> I dig it. Oh, man. Whew, here we go. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to sit back and I'm just going to enjoy this. All right. So last week, you know, we've been talking about Night Trap for a while. And um, I, um, I watched the, uh, the 25th anniversary um, documentary that they put on YouTube not, uh, about a year or so ago. I've uh, been talking about Night Trap kind of off and on since then, and um, uh, one of our uh, listeners, um, Tyler Watson, uh, got a hold of me last week and was like, hey man, uh, Night, Tra- Night Trap's $3 on the Switch right now. You should go grab it and do a review. I was like, all right, awesome. So I immediately went, paid my $3, and got Night Trap. And before I go into it... <laughs> Night Trap is an interactive movie video game developed by Digital Pictures and originally released by Sega for the Sega CD in 1992. The game is presented primarily through the use of full motion video. In Night Trap, the player takes the role of a special agent tasked to watch over teenage girls uh, visiting, uh, visiting a house which unbeknownst to them is full of danger. The player watches live surveillance footage of the house and triggers traps to capture anyone seen endangering the girls. The players can freely switch their view between different cameras to keep watch over the girls and eavesdrop on conversations to follow the story and listen for clues. Um, So uh, we'll go back into the the origins of Night Trap in a bit. Whew, this game is rough, man. Uh, It looks nice. It's it's got a a complete, you know, HD overhaul. They they actually went back and um, re, uh, you know, got all the footage <clears throat> that they had for the game and and basically remastered all of it to to be able to do this 25th anniversary remaster 
and it looks great don't get me wrong i mean you know the sound is great like as soon as i started up it was almost like it was like feel like i was watching an episode of like uh um like what's something from the 90s like you know like those hour long uh syndicated shows like uh like renegade or <laughs> um uh, let's, uh, what's the beach one with the, uh, David Hasselhoff Baywatch. Oh, Baywatch. Yeah. It had that weird kind of video quality to it, you know, bad lighting, you know, like it's just, it, it's got a complete, like it took me right back to that era of the nineties of like this, the way it was shot, the way it looks. And it felt like a, you know, an episode of fresh prints, like <laughs> the way it was shot. And I was like, "All right, I'm I'm in I'm in for this. This is gonna be cool." And you get into the game, and it immediately gives you like the most convoluted freaking control system that I've ever had to go through for a video game. I'm like, all right, just let me get through this and just try to figure it out. And even Tyler Watson told me that I should probably go get a um, a walkthrough to get through it because my first couple of playthroughs, what I was trying to do was you know flip between the cameras and try because you have to follow the story because there are certain i guess places in the game where you got to put in codes or something like that but you got to listen to the dialogue that people are talking to kind of get clues about this kind of stuff but when i'm watching these these scenes like other shit's going on in the house that i'm missing and then all of a sudden, like, the guy keeps coming on and being like, you're not doing your job, and, like, then the game's over. And, like, if you can't do your job, we'll find somebody else, and the, it's game over. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to, like, listen to the dialogue when there's, like, all this shit going on around in the house? And even when I'm, like, I get to a room where, like, the, the room will flash where, like, something's happening, and you go to that room, and you see the what are the guys called? They're they were like supposed to be like um, vampires or something. What are they called again? I'm trying to look up the name of. Them. I can't. They're like weird vampire dudes. And you go to that room and you they're like they hit a certain point in the room and like the you're, the little flasher goes off and that's when you're supposed to hit the button to make the the trap go off. And most of the time, it doesn't even work. Like, I'm sitting there smashing the button, and nothing's happening. And I'm just like, this is awful. <laughs> I played through it, like, maybe four times and died, like, every time. Like, not die, but the guy comes on. He's like, you're not doing your job like you're supposed to. And, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm done with this. So... I, I, truth be told, I've already wiped it off of my Switch and replaced it with Animal Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds it's, like you made quite the improvement by doing that. And it, here's the thing, like, it's, I wouldn't mind going back and, like, just watching the cutscenes, like, maybe in a, a YouTube video, like, if somebody cut them all together or something because I actually wanted to watch the story because it was so dumb and badly acted I was just like this is like a weird 90s B movie I want to watch this but you can't because there's so much shit going on in the rest of the house and by the time you get there like I said I'm pressing the button trying to get the traps to go off and the traps won't even go off so I'm like why am I what am I doing this for that was three dollars down the drain not not really I mean I'm glad I got to play it because I got a lot of nostalgia for this game, uh, Double Switch and um, Sewer Shark, because I had a friend of mine in high school, and um, it was, like we're gonna go take a step back in the way back machine to 1995, and um, one of my friends in high school, his name was Danny Brody, and his parents had a bit of money. Like his dad was a writer for some like hunting and fishing magazine or something. So they had this house, and then they decided to build on to the back of the house. So they had this whole other house built onto the back, which basically just became Danny's section of the house. Like, his bedroom was the entire second floor. He had this huge living room, like a bathroom and like a half kitchen in there. It was like his own apartment in, the, in high school. And I was like, you are the luckiest human being I've ever known in my life. And he had a big screen TV 
and uh, Sega Genesis with the Sega CD. So I remember uh, staying over there one weekend when he had gotten uh, he had gotten Double Switch, Night Trap, and um, Sewer Shark, and we played those three games over the whole weekend, just you know, like taking turns playing these games. And so that like playing this immediately took me back to that time in my life, and I even knew then like the full motion video of the Sega CD was bad because it just looked bad even back then. So it's cool to go back and see this completely. Like they put a lot of work into this to remaster it. And um, because it's pretty much an H, not uh, it's, it's, I, I would say HD. I mean, it's pretty high quality video um, and it looks great and sounds great, but it's just, it's, it's not much of a game. It's like, it reminds me of those weird, you remember those VCR games they used to put out, but they tried to start putting out like back in the early to mid nineties, or maybe it was even earlier than that. Those weird, like you would get like a VHS tape and there would be like a light gun and it's weird. Like, I, I'm trying to explain it, like, because I know you know what I'm talking. Like people that yeah. are, let me see if anybody in the chat room knows what I'm talking about. Augers, the vampire people, that's what they're called. Um, <laughs> he said Dana uh, X Plato Seven said Dana Plato was about the only good thing about it. Yeah, because she, she was the only professional actress in this thing. <laughs> and uh, I am the rampage said Augers. That's what they were called, the vampire people. So there had. Um, Basically, all they do is, for some reason, they're attacking this house. I never got to why they were attacking the house, but there's just a horde of them coming into the house, and they've got, you know, like, they're trying to steal the teenagers to get their blood or something. I don't know. I never got that far into the game. Uh, Action Max, that's what would, one of those things was called, like the VCR games. Action Max. I'm going to have to go and look up a video for that on uh, YouTube and <laughs> post it to the Nerd Cave Retro Twitter page. Remind me to remember that Action Max. I remember that. That was so bad. Um, I have to find you one for your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about Night Trap is, is it was the game that basically, uh, they said the game received mixed reviews. Critics praised its B-movie-esque quality, warped humor, and smooth video am and animation, but criticized the shallow gameplay. Um, it is the principal subject of a 1993 United States Senate committee hearing on violent video games along with Mortal Kombat. Night Trap was cited during the hearing as promoting gratuitous violence and sexual aggression against women, prompting toy retailers, Toys R Us, and KB Toys to pull the game from shelves that December <coughs> and Sega to cease its production entirely the following month. Uh, the, searing, the Senate hearing eventually led to the creation of the ESRB, the North American Video Game Ratings Board, still used today. Um, Night Trap was re-released and ported to other consoles. These later reports received more heart these later ports received more harsh reviews due to the aging appeal of full motion video as a game medium. It was re-released in 2017, comm commemorating its 25th anniversary. And that was the one that I played on the Switch. So I don't know if you remember. You were probably too young to remember that, Derek, with the whole U.S. Senate hearing, the committee hearing on violent video games. It, it seems like it's a perpetual thing that keeps going on every few years. Every time there something happens with with our youth, it's due to the video video games. And like this has been going on since '93, really. Yeah. I vaguely remember hearing about this. Let's see, if it was ninety three, I would have been, I would have been seven at the time. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was I was playing video games, but you know, it was strictly like Mario and Zelda and a few other SNES titles. Like really, Mortal Kombat was the most violent game that I played as a kid. But yeah. Even then, I knew it's like, and I don't want to get into a whole like video game violence debate, but it's not really about the game. It's about the mindset, yeah, and the environment outside of the video game, yeah. In my opinion, but I mean, my what what little I've seen of of Night Trap because I watched a little bit on YouTube, and I agree with you in the sense that, like, I have no desire whatsoever to play this game. 
but I would be interested in just watching a YouTube video of the story. I mean, I, and, I'm going to be totally honest. The actual the documentary they did about the making of Night Trap is way more interesting than the game itself. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, I remember us talking about it, and I, I haven't got around to watching it yet, but watching the the segments from the actual game, it, and I don't want to knock it because I'm sure hard work went into it. Yeah. But it, it reminded me of something that my friends and I would have made in a production class in college. Yeah. If I'm being completely honest. But I, I, like I said, I'd be interested in, in watching the story on YouTube, but... Because it's... it's like, I, I don't... Uh, go ahead. Go, uh, I was going to say, it really is interesting from, like, as a filmmaker, and I think you would find it interesting, too, because um, it said it was developed over six months as part, uh, it was part movie shoot and part programming, and the, it was actually shot on 35 millimeter film in Culver City, California, across 16 days uh, in 1987, with editing taking another few months, and it's weird when they were talking about how they actually had to do that, because you have to film multiple uh versions of different scenes because of the different um you know actions that players can take because you're basically you're trying to film a uh, choose your own adventure basically and it's like how do you do that and so you look at their schedule and <clears throat> their shot list and i and like they showed like some of their shot list and like it's just like i don't even know what i'm looking at like how do you keep like, how in the hell did you keep track of all this? Like, I just, it, it blows my mind that they were actually able to pull this off. And that was another thought that I had, too, is it reminded me very much of, like, those old choose-your-own-adventure novels yeah. <clears throat> back in the day. But little cool trivia fact about this, the director of photography was Don Burgess, who later went on to shoot Forrest Gump. Oh, that's cool. And that's, you know, that's the thing is, like, it actually looks good. And I'm just saying, mm -hmm. it has that feel of, like, a bad 90s, like, syndicated TV show. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that, yeah. it has that look to it, that music, that, like, it's instantly, as soon as you see it, you're just like, it, it instantly takes you back to that, you know, 1992 Saturday afternoon of, like, all right, I'm going to watch Renegade and Baywatch and Highlander. <laughs> it's like it takes me right back to that time. Now I've got the Baywatch theme stuck in yeah. my head. <laughs> I'll be there. I won't sing the whole thing, but. The Hoff. Yeah. The Hoff. Yeah, you don't hassle the Hoff. Yeah, don't hassle the Hoff, bro. I, I, will, I will say this, and this is just from what very little I've seen and from what I've heard you talk about the game. I'll say this as a positive. I give them credit for doing something like to this extent because you know, yeah. like shooting even just a short film, and both you and I know that from experience yeah. is not easy. Yeah, shooting essentially a video game in a like almost innovative style in 16 days and incorporating that into an interactive format, I, I got to give them credit for at least trying it, and yet yet may not have turned out that great. Yeah. But the fact that they tried something different is is pretty cool, I think. Yeah, what did it say? Uh, $1.5 million budget for Night Trap. Making, uh, said one, Night Trap had a $1.5 million budget and Sewer Shark had a $3 million, making them two of the most expensive video games of the era. And you think about, like, $1.5 million back in, night. what was this, 92 when they filmed it or whatever that's a lot of money back then for a video game you know, that's nothing mm. these days they dropped 300 million dollars on a video game like it's nothing these days but back then that was unheard of yeah and the amount of work that they had to put go into to film this thing and and bring it to life like i really got to give it to them like i give them props for that but as far as a game goes it's not fun at all i had no fun playing this game i thought i would at least have a, a little you know get a little nostalgia going and be like all right this is kind of cool it wasn't <laughs> i'm like man i would yeah. rather just go 
on YouTube and watch all the scenes cut together. Or hell, even just watch the, the documentary again. Because the documentary was is a thousand times more entertaining than the actual video game. Because I don't really even think... I don't even know if you can even call it a video game. Because you're not really doing anything except hitting a button. It's almost like... It's like a little bit more of a, a better version of um, Dragon's Lair. Because it is sort of like a... Okay... <laughs> hit the button when the scr when the screen flashes or whatever that sort of gameplay but it's not fun that's why you don't you know people have a lot of nostalgia for Dragon's Lair but do you want to go back and play it again no <laughs> that game sucks i'd rather just watch a Dragon's Lair movie <laughs> or something like yeah. that but i don't know it was a weird time in gaming and i give them props for trying it it, it's cool, but it's not something. And then, like I said, I've already erased it from my Switch. Like this thing was six point five gigabytes on my Switch. Holy I'm like, crap! Yeah, I'm not gonna ever play this again. And I only spent three bucks, so I'd rather yeah. use that six point five megabytes for Animal Crossing, which is Animal Crossing was like six point two, I think, mega or uh, gigabytes. So I was like, yeah, buy a Night Trap. At least it was only three dollars. Yeah, and I don't feel too bad. I mean, at least I got to play it. I was interested in playing it again. I would never play it again, and I'm not gonna recommend it. I mean, I give it. I don't even want to grade it honestly, because it's not even really a video game. I give. I would give it a, a you know, an A for effort, but it, it it's not even really a game. I, I would just honestly the the making of the game is much more interesting than the game itself is what I'm gonna say. Yeah. No, I, I've still got to check out that documentary, and I, I will relatively soon. Yeah. But I, I'll I'll avoid the game. I'll right. just watch the the cutscenes. Yeah, and I'll be honest. If I if you know if I ran across an old Sega CD copy of this somewhere i would want to own a copy of it just to have it for the historical value because you know like i really like like the cover art and stuff like that it's got that you know kind of 80s like uh slasher horror kind of look to it but you know i would never want to play it i would just want it as something to display as like a conversation piece because i yeah. love talking about night trap but I don't ever want to play it. <laughs> and that's pretty much my review is like, it's really not anything to review. It's just A for effort. But when it comes, like, if you're going to spend three bucks on the Switch, I, and that's a lot of gigs, man. 6.5 gigs for this game that you're never going to play. I can't recommend that, man. I can't. So that's a big thumbs down. Big, big thumbs down. And I mean, you know, I, we talked about this, I think, sometime last week, is that not every review on the show is going to be this, you know, instant classic, 8 out of 10, you got to have it. Because I mean, there, there are going to be some bad games out there. Yeah, so. I on the Rampage said, Charles in charge with vampires, only not good. <laughs> it, <laughs> it does have that Charles in charge look about it. <laughs> oh, Charles in charge. I like that charge. comparison. Oh man, David Hasselhoff, don't you mean Zardu Hasselfrau? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's uh, good. <laughs> uh, he said he's waiting for the Ryan Reynolds Dragon Slayer movie. I mean, I know that's only a, uh, a rumor, but that would, like, I don't, I can't think of any other human being on the planet that's born to play the uh, Dirk the Daring than Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. That needs to happen. Yeah. But that's all I got to say on Night Trap. You just go watch the, the documentary on YouTube. The documentary gets two thumbs up. The game gets two thumbs down. Two big thumbs down. Yep. Well, for, for next week's show, we're actually going to do something um, similar to what we did with our top 10 quarantine list. And I'm, I've been big into lists due to my morning show. So I had the idea, why not do top 10 video game soundtracks of all time? So we're yes. going to do that next week. 
And um, I'll post uh, a thread on Facebook and Twitter probably early next week to try and get uh, your guys' suggestions. And much like the quarantine list, we'll we'll read them on the show. I think everybody already knows mine and your number one. So <laughs> do we yeah. even need to say it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, like, between you know, you doing your stream, then me doing mine last week, I've gotten really into a video game music phase lately. Yeah. There's some really good soundtracks, and it's going to be tough to narrow it down even to 10, I think. So, yeah, it, it, it was, it's going to be good. I, I'm excited to do it. Yeah. I like doing the uh, list shows. We may even need to get Wally in on this one. I'd be down. Hmm. See what he's doing next week. <laughs> I had I had another idea, too, and, and we can do this for really any type of future show. But you know how we talk about if this is like we'll use like Link to the Past, for example, like if you could only have five games in your console collection, like you have to have this. Mm -hmm. We should go through we'll, we'll pick like three consoles and we have the option if you can only choose five games to own. What would they be? All right, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> J just spitballing some ideas. I mean, we we got the time. Yeah, all the time in the world. Yeah, but uh, we have something coming up Saturday. What is it? Yeah, so um, I, I mentioned this on my show the last couple of weeks, as well as on the Daily Diamond. But the Derek Diamond experience is going to be a part of CyberCon which is a 100% free, 100% digital weekend convention. It's essentially going to be streamed on Facebook Live. You can go to CyberCon on Facebook, and it's going to start, I think, Friday at 11 a.m. and stream from then until the end of the day on Sunday. And Jason and I are going to be doing a really fun panel on Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, about the long-term effects that COVID-19 will have on the film industry. Mm -hmm. So if you want to tune in live, you can go to either the CyberCon or Derek Diamond Experience Facebook page at that time, and you can watch our stream. So it'll be a lot of fun, and I think the, the whole weekend like cyber convention is a really good idea. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, it should be a lot of fun. Just so. see how it's going to work, you know? Like, this kind of, I feel like this kind of uh, testing ground for this sorts of things moving into the future. And we're kind of mm -hmm. at the forefront. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it should be a lot of fun. And as always, you know, if you want to follow the Derek Diamond experience on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at D Diamond Podcast. New episodes drop every Thursday. I do a live show every Tuesday at 8 p.m. And if you want to check out my morning show, you can go to the Derek Diamond Experience Facebook page. I do that Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. And uh, like I said, we're going to put our uh, commentary episode for the Go Real Ghostbusters up on the Patreon feed for the Patreon people. Um, and then we'll put it out to the public uh, in about a week or two. Uh, we'll give the Patreon people something extra to listen to for a little while. Um, and also uh, my stream this weekend. Um, usually I've been doing my streams at 4 o'clock uh, Central. But since we're doing the uh, the CyberCon panel at 5, I'm probably going to push it up to about 3. And uh, maybe doing... Uh, I th I'm going to go ahead and do DuckTales again. See if I can finish it. I'm going to give myself a two-hour time limit to finish it. And if I can't... Oh, well, and then the next week I'll move on to uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I'll have Derek on with me for that one. Yes. Yes. And I will, um, this Sunday, I'll be continuing my stream of Link to the Past. Fantastic. So you can go to twitch.tv slash Derek underscore Diamond. I'll be, I'll be streaming at 4 on um, Sunday, so be sure to tune in for that. Fantastic. Well, if I don't know about you, but I am ready to walk out the door this evening. What do you say? Let's do it. If you would like to email us, you can email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We are at nerdcaveretro.com. We're on Instagram and Twitter at nerdcaveretro. 
We're on individually at jfunktastic and at Derek underscore diamond. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdcaveretro. We're also on Patreon at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro where you can throw us a buck or three bucks or five bucks a month to keep the show going. And if we get back to that $50 level, we will do an extra episode every month for you guys. So get us back up to that level. And uh, that's what we're doing this month for the Patreon people that have already been doing it for us for a while they get to listen to ghostbusters before you guys so if you want to hear that go throw us a buck and uh if you can't do that which i understand we're we're quarantined money's tight if you can't do that go leave us a review wherever fine podcasts are sold so Derek, please tell them what it's all about who are you gonna call ghostbusters master blaster runs by the town you blow it Fantastic. That was a good show. Yeah. Too bad. I, I'm sorry I didn't have too much to say about Night Trap. It's just one of those weird games, man. <laughs> no, I mean, it, like I said, reviews like that are going to happen. Yeah, I just uh, got to find a crappy game to review in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you guys, for watching in the, uh, the Twitch chat. Axe Bleed and Rampage, you guys. Thank you very much. And uh, we will see you guys... Probably this weekend. If not this weekend, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys. Bye, Facebook.